So on to lesson eight, and this one is going to be on upgrading the sounds or editing the internal sounds on the iwi. Now the system that all instruments use to connect to other instruments or computers is what we call MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Now most pieces of kit have these MIDI connectors on the back and these MIDI cables are freely uh, um, available um, from most good uh, shops. So you'll need at least a MIDI cable and your piece of equipment, in our case the iwi, but you'll also need some kind of interface because if you look on your computer you will not find a connection with one of these five pin sockets on the back of your computer. So what we have to do is have a halfway stage, what we call an interface, to connect the MIDI cable in the back and from there we connect to the computer, usually by a, a USB cable, a bit like plugging in a printer. Now, there are various different types of these um, interfaces, and I strongly advise that before you go and buy one, have a look on an excellent website, www.patchmanmusic.com. I hope to put a, a link to that in this post underneath this video. Now, the thing is that there are some very cheap interfaces available, maybe 30, 40 pounds. You'll probably find that particularly with the iwi, they won't work satisfactorily. The issue is that unlike an ordinary keyboard, the iwi sends out many, many thousands pieces of information per second much more than the keyboard does. Because of its expressive qualities, the iwi sends out vastly more information. So you'll need a really good, reliable interface. Now, the ones from M-Audio seem to be quite popular with iwi players, and that's the one I have here. Some of them just do MIDI, and some of them do MIDI and audio. Now, I'd suggest again that you think carefully before buying one, because the chances are you may well want the audio part as well as the MIDI. But again, I can't really offer advice on every individual piece of equipment. This is just um, my experience. So we connect the iwi to the interface by going on the interface to MIDI out and on the iwi to MIDI in. Now that is really important to get that the right way round because if you get them the wrong way round nothing's going to work and everybody seems to make that mistake. Now you'll also really want a second cable for this part of the exercise. You'll want a second cable going the other way round from MIDI out on the iwi to MIDI in on the interface. The interface is then plugged into your computer. Now there may be various drivers to install. Most interfaces go in fairly smoothly. But again, that will be trial and error on your part. Now in the next section, I'm going to show you the bit of software that we use to manage sounds and to uh, alter sounds um, on the iwi. Okay, so you've got your iwi connected to the computer via the interface. Remember that you're going to need both the in and the out connections connected to the in and out connections on the iwi. Next thing you want to do is go to the patchmanmusic.com website. Here it is. It's got a brilliant wind controller, frequently asked questions, and an excellent forum with very, very helpful people there. Uh, this page, uh, which I've got from the Wind Controller Sound Banks, is the page about the sounds that you can download to vastly improve the quality of the sounds on your iwi. It gives you some good audio demos as an MP3, and there's an online order form that you just go ahead, you fill out your details there, and you download the files they get sent via email.
Okay, uh, the next thing I'm going to do now is open up this piece of software called Visex. Now this is the piece of software that communicates with the iwi. And it's a free download. You should find it, um, the link to it in the post below this video. And as soon as you open it, if the settings are right, you should get this screen come up where it's downloading the internal information that's currently in your iwi. If that didn't happen, again, have a look at the Visex site and see if you can get help on that. The main thing I found was that the MIDI in and out ports have to be set properly in both directions to make sure that that's working for you. Again, I can't really offer um, in-depth um, advice for every piece of equipment and every piece of software, but <clears throat> this is what I use. Now then, the first thing I'd do is I'd suggest that you should back up your current library of sounds uh, to make sure that we don't make any mistakes and mess up your current sounds. That's very easily. You've got two buttons up here, an open and a save, just like any other program. You're going to save it. You can name it what you like, press save, and that's your sound bank already set up. By the way, um, if when you open this piece of software, it doesn't uh, continue and download those sounds, it's worth trying two or three times. It seems to be uh, a bit buggy. And um, again, have a look on the frequently asked questions on the Patchman site. You'll get some answers there. Now then, there are two main screens to this um, uh, piece of software. There's the bank screen and the preset screen. The preset screen allows us to make individual little um, uh, uh, adjustments to the sound. You can play around with all of these knobs and switches and make some fantastic variations to the sound. I'll show you one that I'll, um, I'll play around with in, in, in just a moment. Um, then uh, we can return to the bank. In the bank screen, we can edit the position of these uh, voices. We can just drag hold of a voice and drag it to a different internal slot. Um, and then once it's all done, we've got the control up here to say either get or put. Once you've made an edit or once you've moved your bank around, you want to put it back to the iwi. So you press the but put button and off it goes back into the iwi to be stored. So let's say you have downloaded your Patchman uh, sounds and you're wanting to input them. Well, all we're going to do is open. You would select your Patchman sound bank there. Uh, I don't want to save those changes that I've made. And here is the Patchman um, range of sounds. There are a hundred sounds now. All we'd have to do is press the put and it would send them all over to the iwi. And provided all the connections have worked properly, that's what you would do. So I've just selected one of my sounds, a recorder sound, which sounds just like a recorder. And it responds very nicely because it's the sound that's programmed by Patchman Music. Now then, if we want to make edits to this, we can have a little bit of fun. You may have already seen a fantastic Jeff Cashua video of him playing a Telemann canonic sonata. This is where effectively it sounds like he's playing two parts of a canonic duet uh, by himself. Now, um, actually, this is quite easy to do once you've got into this uh, Visex software and the connections. I've selected a sound and I'm going up here to the effects and the delay section. I'm going to move up this damp knob and the level knob to full clockwise. And then I'm going to just experiment a little bit with this time value here because that's going to govern the distance between the initial sound and the repeat. Now that's about right. If I play a little bit of the uh, canonic sonata,
and that's what you can do by just making that small adjustment. Then you can return up to the top left hand corner and press put to save that into your iwi and it will be saved into the uh, relevant um, memory slot. So have a look at the instructions. There's quite a good instruction manual with Visex and you can uh, really get a huge amount of benefit out of downloading those Patchman sounds and upgrading your iwi to a new height. With any luck, that's all worked out smoothly for you and you're now able to make some small alterations to the sounds and maybe get those Patchman sounds built in uh, input into your iwi as well. Um, we're going to look next at external modules. You'll probably still need the uh, interface. See you in lesson nine.